So happy Monday. It's still a long weekend and we've just seen a nice little flush out in the markets a couple of hours ago. So I've opened banter bubbles. It's red AF. But anyway, today we are looking at the big dog. I'm looking at some strength here and I want to give you a couple of reasons why I'm still so bullish uh, on the big dog. Then what I've also got for you guys is a look at some uh, Solana things. I've also got Gito. I've got Sui. And uh, there's a lot to talk about here, guys. There's a couple of tweets floating around. I've got a meme coin that I've bought as well that could be interesting to you guys. So we've got a lot to discuss here uh, on this Monday. Let's get right into it. I see, I see Prince in the chat says, yeah, the beard man. <laughs> What's happening, guys? Okay, so banter bubbles not looking great. I mean, unless you're an absolute bear and you shorted the market, uh, it's not a good vibe. But uh, Dupe is there, Core is there, 54% Sui uh, showing strength. we got some Sui event coming this week. So uh, we're going to talk about the Sui token today. Um, but generally, we've just seen some bleed out. We've seen classic weekend vibes we got thin liquidity all these things going on and uh, there's games all over the place so you know was this last flash out maybe the bottom of the move so we're going to look at uh, some of these tokens i've got some ecosystem tokens that i want to show you guys and uh, i have taken a scalp long on one of them just in case that was the bottom but let's uh, let's look at this btc situation and try and just decipher what the plan is here and what these guys are, are actually doing to us on this monday where we're supposed to be relaxing and uh, we are moving around in our seats because we're getting red candles here so this is btc on the two hour that i'm watching currently and uh, you know so far we, we can't really complain we are moving into an area of interest here lower down so it is for at the moment holding this little tight range so let's say uh, let's keep our eyes on this current level 68600 so let's watch this little cluster uh, over here and see if we can reclaim this area quickly if we don't then i think it would be fair to assume that a nice little number for us here for btc traders where do we look for our next potential scalp long and things like that it's going to be for me uh, 67500 down to about 66,800. Anywhere in this little region over here looks like a nice little zone where we could get some kind of scalp long and uh, then push it up. I would say by the time we get to this rising trend uh, and these horizontals, the sellers are getting tired and uh, we are due a bounce. So I'm looking for something along these lines uh, for today. Okay, so this is my plan at the moment. I don't want to look too much lower. That is what I'm kind of watching now for the next uh, 24 hours or so. This is what I want to see. I want to see this level hold and then that might give us the bounce that we are looking at uh, for BTC. So number one, let's see if we can reclaim this area right here uh, at around about, say, call it 68 68 700 68 800 if we can start reclaiming this area here then you know then the game's potentially on again alternatively let's just look for this move lower it makes sense it's got a 382 we got horizontals as well then we've got trend support so there's a lot holding btc up here there's a lot talking to us uh, in this region so just be a little bit patient here don't panic you know, if we start losing this rising trend, then we're going to really start reassessing where we are, uh, you know, in the bigger picture. But uh, right now, let's not panic. Let's watch these uh, watch these levels, watch this trend, and uh, we should be okay here. Okay, let's see uh, who else is here in the chats. I've got guys throwing meme coins at me again. Batcat. What the hell is Batcat? Uh, <laughs> there's a lot going on here. The meme degens are... The mean guys are out in full force uh, the last while. Uh, I see Hemuel and a, a lot of these cat narrative things have been doing well again. I saw Lemiao was cooking. Uh, Hemuel was doing well as well uh, last week. So nice to see a little bit of moves. But, you know, we're trying to relax on the weekend. Sometimes you guys just need to, you know, take your foot off the gas here uh, and just uh, and just chill a bit because these are the types of games that they want to come out and play. So that's why for me, I always like to be in my positions before the weekend. And uh, you don't want to really get caught up trying to be or, or take uh, take trades whether you try to be short or long during a weekend because they do play these games uh, with you guys so the quicker you learn that the better and it's way more relaxing uh, as well okay let's see what's going on in the news just uh, you know some relevant stuff here uh, tether you know they're really becoming legit now remember there were there were many years where everyone was considering them pretty shady and uh, they're really cleaning up their act now so they've uh, secured more btc so that's bullish obviously uh, for the whole uh, for the whole system basically a clean tether i would say is good uh, for the entire crypto market so that is looking decent uh, for us and then salsa tequila uh, gave us a little visual there uh, as to what's just happened now he said 800 million dollars worth of open interest built up on sunday 
with rising funding rates and that got flushed out uh, nice and clean for everybody there so a proper rinse out there uh, on the markets and uh, here's our funding rate heat map that we like so much. And uh, I mean, what are we looking at here? You can see what's going on. Uh, this is this nice thick orange band that we had over here. This was uh, this was yesterday. Okay, so we had uh, we had uh, uh, very high uh, funding rates and things like that. So not looking good. And what did they do? They came and flushed this out, and they've reset it now. And you can see we've got a nice thick green band on the right here, so telling us that the market has been cleaned out a little bit here. And uh, maybe now we can just start resetting and start relaxing. But it is notable this whiff look at this whiff it remains permanently orange here and uh you know this is <laughs> it's actually quite incredible that whiff is now trading uh, at these numbers that it is but uh, they seem relentless i don't know when this whiff party falls over ray uh, i don't know what your thoughts are on this on this whiff situation but it, it just doesn't stop Somebody's um, gonna when does it end when does it end somebody's buying the top Somebody's buying the absolute top uh, of this whiff. So, uh, you know, it looks still hot and still going. So while the music's on, I suppose no reason to complain. You just keep going. But uh, just uh, just exercise a little bit of caution. And uh, guys, follow me on Twitter. I'm dropping loads of alpha uh, and things for you guys. Not just my normal charts and setups. I'm dropping a lot of handy information for you. So at the Lord of Entry, follow me there uh, on Twitter. You could see I was talking today about a, uh, we need some kind of reset. If you look uh, at the weekly RSIs, they're all sitting in quite overbought reasons. Regions. They're telling us we need to just cool off a little bit and maybe move it to neutral. And maybe that is why uh, some of these altcoins are starting to look a little bit red. That is why we're feeling a little bit uncomfortable now uh, in some of our altcoin positions and things like that. So just a, just something to pay attention to. You know, when we get our weekly RSI over the 60 level, it could be a sign that uh, things do need to cool off a little bit. So when you are trading and things like that, just use this in your strategy. Just understand where we are, you know, in the current play and in the current scheme uh, of things. Understand where we are and when you're trading, uh, trade accordingly. Know that these things are potentially quite overbought at the moment on the weekly. And uh, it is April Fool's, but uh, I see people here dropping a ETH NFTs, rest in peace. You know, I mean, can we believe anything we're seeing uh, on Twitter today on April Fool's? Well, it's a, it's a tricky one. So don't fall for too much. You know, if somebody drops some kind of announcements on, tripper, on, on Twitter, don't, uh, you know, FOMO into green candles, uh, especially on April Fool's. We don't know what type of news uh, we are going to get out here, but I see people uh, who's like a massive ETH uh, NFT man is uh, now saying rest in peace. So let me know, you know, is this a, is some kind of April Fool situation from him uh, or whatever his story is. And uh, here's Axel. He's saying the fact that long-term holders are selling means there is demand. And this demand is fueled through the ETF traditional finance. Okay. So he's saying short-term holders or hodlers have bought 1.3 million BTC since the beginning of the year. And the demand continues to grow. Things are bullish out there, regardless of what, uh, you know, the current sentiment is and things like that. I'd say overall, we are bullish and uh, we are still cooking and we are pushing on so that is the current play at the moment out there in the market and uh, what am i watching now on dominance well this is the weekly chart for dominance and again it's been a very slow burner it's been very difficult to watch this dominance situation it's been incredibly boring uh the way it's just trickling around so just to remember again dominance we have resistance higher up and uh, what does this tell me this tells me if we do start pushing up on dominance what do we see generally we see weakness uh in these altcoins when we see this dominance start pushing up but this is where we're going to look for some kind of rejection if it does start pushing and that is where we are looking for our move uh to push lower down just to release uh some of the altcoins so as long as dominance is pushing up we're going to feel pressure on the altcoins as long as dominance is dropping then we are feeling a little bit more relaxed on the alt situation so uh, we do have resistance a little bit higher so that could tell us a little bit of pain to come still uh, for some of these altcoins while we push into this 54 percent here for our potential rejection there so eyes on that and uh, at any point in time if we do lose this rising trend this is a weekly rising trend trend if we do lose that rising trend then uh, you know all bets are off there and uh, these altcoins are going to start really cooking for us so that is a big level uh, that we watching so just mark this on your charts keep these areas uh in mind and uh, you know watch the dominance that's key uh to all the altcoin traders you want to be successful here uh, on some of these altcoins you've got to keep your eyes on these dominance uh, on these dominance numbers okay guys 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 let's see who's in the chats where's my people uh you guys are shouting shib at me as well do we even trade that thing 
Um, look, we know April is traditionally uh, some kind of meme, you know, some kind of meme month and things like that. So we can start paying a little bit of attention uh, to more of these meme coins. And if you stick around, I'm going to show you a meme coin that I bought today. That's got about a, it's probably about a million dollar market cap now. So there is, a, it does have room to grow. And uh, I'm going to take you guys through that and uh, and explain the situation to you. Okay, let's see. Come, where's the normal people? You guys are shouting meme coins at me here. Uh, I see Abane saying he's looking for some entries. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's discuss this big dog here. I want to give you a couple of reasons why uh, I'm feeling so bullish still on this ETH situation. Okay, we know it's uh, it's about fifty odd days left. Uh, till the ETH ETF deadline. Okay, we understand that. Then we've got Ali Charts dropping us some information here. He's telling us quarter two has historically been very bullish for Ethereum. Okay, so follow Ali Charts here on Twitter. Take a look uh, at this little chart that he's put up here. And uh, if you look at the numbers that he's given us, quarter two has generally been a very bullish situation for ETH. Okay, so number one, that is why I'm feeling quite positive about ETH. We've also got the ETF around the corner that could potentially give us uh, a kind of bullish push. Then we've got all this base situation i'm sure you've heard uncle run uh, talking about this dgen uh, token and the ecosystem and all these meme coins what is this telling us it's telling us if people are moving to base it means people are using the ETH ecosystem and uh, usage is starting to grow there and uh, if you bullish on base and you bullish on those type of things then we know that ETH automatically by default uh, you need to be bullish on because it's part of the same cluster it's part of the same uh, operation there okay and then we've got larry fink again telling us it doesn't matter you know if they label ETH uh, a, a, a security or whatever they want to call it he doesn't care he's basically saying he thinks it's going to get uh, approved regardless so how can we be bearish on ETH when we have this type of information uh, in front of us this type of information getting spat out at us we'd be we'd be completely contrarian if uh, if, if we're not bullish on the current situation here uh, with ETH okay and then one more drop for you I've got an ETH on the weekly we've looked at this multiple times on my show but again we can't argue with massive support we can't argue with multi-year multi-level uh, support here uh, for ETH this is the weekly again the 0 0.05 this is ETH versus BTC on the weekly we are at a major major support level here and it's looking to me like we should get some kind of reversal in this area again it doesn't have to be uh, straight to the stars it doesn't have to be to the moon but uh, we can get some kind of bounce here and just give us a little bit of a move here on these altcoins it looks like for me nice little support here you can see we've got uh, the rsi trending higher as well we've got the price staying flat and they're telling us they're trying to get this momentum going so we might be getting some kind of reversal here so eyes on this ETH BTC chart it's massive uh, for me at the moment and uh, while we're looking at that while we're looking for this potential ETH BTC reversal you can see ETH is dropping right now into a hot zone here a potential long zone for us right now uh, for us ETH dropping into the 50-day moving average the 236 fib and this weekly support and I've added to my current ETH long in this position uh, over here. So my ETH uh, average entry now is about 2,550, give or take. That is where I'm sitting at the moment. And uh, for me, this is a big zone uh, for ETH traders. This is what you're looking at. You like that, eh, right? You like That's that. fucking like sexy. That. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where I am at the moment. You know, I, I've got conviction on support. There's multiple reasons why I'm bullish on ETH. So I've added uh, to my position. And uh, this is what I'm looking at. We're looking uh, for this move higher. We're considering this uh, this current pullback or this current draw uh, drawdown a temporary situation here on BTC. And uh, if, uh, if it's going to be more than a temporary situation, here's BTC again, then I would expect that BTC is going to be losing trends and we're going to be doing a lot a lot more sort of darker and deadly things and and uh, we don't need to deal with that now until we've lost that trend and as long as btc is holding trend and support for me i'm bullish on eth and uh, i'm bullish on altcoins on big support zones and things like that so that is the game i'm currently playing on eth let's see who wants a setup who wants a setup i'm going to tell you about a setup guys let me let me actually show you what's going on here i've got a bit of a vibe here uh i've got an exchange weeks that i've told you guys about multiple times and they've got a couple of things okay they've got a couple of things on offer here uh for you guys number one is they doing a ten thousand dollar giveaway okay for sign up so what you're going to do is you're going to go into the link in the description uh, of the show okay you're going to see multiple exchanges there weeks is going to be at the top okay they are a kyc friendly exchange they are giving you uh, uh giving away a hundred dollars as a bonus to a hundred winners they are selecting you uh randomly before 
the 10th of April. All you need to do is be trading on the Weeks Exchange. So sign up, use the link in the description below, sign up to Weeks and uh, get cracking and take advantage uh, of that offer that they are giving you. And then on top of that, there's an entire event that they're giving you for the whole of April. Okay, this is limited uh, for April only. And it's only if you're signing up to my account in the link in the description here this is what they're going to do for you guys so number one they're giving you rinse protection basically they're going to protect your first loss for your first trade of up to 300 dollars. so take a look uh, at the offer over there and then lower down they've given you a 20 percent deposit bonus so look at their uh, table over here you can see if you put in five thousand dollars they're giving you a thousand dollars as a sign up bonus so take a look at weeks the link is in the description take advantage you don't often get uh, offers like that and uh, right now I am trading weeks at the moment and uh, I've taken a scalp long and I'm going to show you that little setup. I'm going to show you why it was interesting to me uh, at uh, at this exact moment. So this is a Manta long that I've taken uh, on weeks. So you can see here we go. I've highlighted Manta in the chart and they've displayed a little chart here for me. And uh, I opened the trade about maybe 10 minutes ago. So I'm going to show you how to put in a stop loss uh, as well for this uh, for this setup. Let's uh, let's actually look at it currently. So this is uh, an ETH uh, ecosystem play Manta. And uh, you can see trend traders, guys that like to trade off trend bounces and things like that. Here's a typical uh, setup for you. So we've had Manta melting down into a trend. What do I have uh, in this area that is interesting to me? Well, I've got my trend support. So that has been triggered, number one. You can see we do have some tie-in on some horizontals as well in this, in this region. So we've got trend support and horizontals. And then a little bit lower down, I've got support here at the 786. So if we do bleed out a little bit lower, I'm looking for some kind of bounce into the 786 region and then a nice little kick uh, onwards for Manta. So this is my first entry uh, at the moment where I am. I've bought it on the trend line. My next entry is going to be slightly lower down. So call it 2.75. So what you can do is you can set a limit order uh, as to where you want to do it. So I'm going to go limit order and uh, I'm going to set this uh, order to add just above that uh, 786 fib. I'm going to add another, uh, another $5,000 to that position. So I'm going to open long and uh, that is my limit order now set okay for manta so now i'm going to have another order lower down you can see now it's uh, displayed here on my chart for me and uh, if it now drifts lower into that zone it's going to pick up uh, that 786 fib it's going to pick up uh, the tie in here as well and then that's where we're going to be looking uh, for that potential bounce and then again if this trade fails and we start losing our areas let's say we close underneath the 786 fib then i'm going to start bailing out of this position i'm going to start trimming uh, my position here so if we get a candle close under this region that's potentially telling me that uh, things are going to be bearish and we are heading then more south in uh, you know we we're heading a little bit lower so that is the game i'm going to play here potential sculpt long here uh, for manta off this region trend and horizontal then a little bit lower down we backed up uh, by a 786 so let's see how that plays out and uh, i am trading it on weeks guys remember limited offer here uh, for you guys at the moment okay here's another uh, here's another eth ecosystem play for you guys if we bullish on eth we bullish on the eth ecosystem we need to understand where our best zones are where our potential entries are and things like that here's optimism on the eight hour that i'm currently playing with and uh, looking uh, at two specific areas so if that was the bottom of the move you're going to see a lot of your altcoins that you are trading at the moment are going to be looking for bounces in their current region so if btc is going to recover now and reclaim that region that we spoke about uh, at the beginning of the show we're going to look for these altcoins to start bouncing on these support regions if btc is going to continue bleeding lower then we need to start identifying our next major region for these altcoins where are we going to head to next and it's going to be applicable to most of the altcoins that you guys are watching that you guys are trading you need to understand where your next zone is we always need to have an understanding as to where's our next bailout zone where do we get our next bounce uh, and for me it's pretty clear that uh, the next big zone for optimism traders if you are looking for a bounce this is your next big zone for optimism it's going to be around about 3.06 so that is a massive zone for us that we've got to keep our eyes on. So we're going to look for something along these lines. If we start losing this level, it's going to be the same as uh, uh, Manta that we just looked at. We're probably going to drift lower and uh, then we're going to be looking for a bounce along these lines. So optimism traders, mark this on your chart here. There's a nice hot zone incoming uh, for you guys. 3.06. 3.07 anywhere uh, in that region could be a nice trigger long there for you. So I'm going to set my alarm on trading view at the moment. Let's see, uh, add my alarm. And uh, if we hit that area, that is where we're going to look for our next uh, set of longs. And it's going to be applicable to a lot of these altcoins that you guys are, are trading currently. 
okay, here's another uh, e e ecosystem play, Arbitrum, and uh, same story. So you can see we've got a general look here. And if, if you start pulling out your altcoins that you are trading, you're going to get the same feeling uh, amongst a lot of them. So make sure you're identifying your existing support zones that you are watching right now, and then make sure you identify your next uh, support level where you could get your next potential bounce so uh, you can see it's very clear here for arbitrum what we're looking at we are looking at a potential region here where we could get some kind of reaction remember let's see where this candle closes they could for example push this higher uh, and then we get the candle close above this region and uh, then arbitrum is cooking but uh, if they start pushing you lower you can see it's very clear where we could be going here this is the 200 day moving average here for us this is a 618 we know we love a 618 we get massive uh, uh, massive reactions off these 618s and uh, we've got some horizontal tie in in this region as well so my next big zone for arbitrum 1.39 1.4 anywhere in that region that is your next big zone that's your next region where you are looking for long so if we get the meltdown and your current ultra uh, altcoin trade start failing on you your next big area identify your next one and you can see 200 day moving average 618 fib horizontal for me that's giving us a reaction that's giving us something uh, to play with that's giving us something to work with and uh, we should get uh, we should get a result there okay i'm reading the chats i'm reading the chats i'm reading the chats the, the meme guys are still here shouting at me um where's the regular guys where's the guys trading fetch and ocean huh have they left us right it's the meme guys shouting at me um they're all at the casino man they're all at the casino guys you must come back to reality because i'll tell you what happens with this meme market at some point this meme market falls over and it goes to zero okay and don't forget about you know what you what skills you are learning here watching okay it's one thing trying to sculpt uh, meme coins on bird eye and all these types of things like we all do it we're all guilty of it obviously but uh, just remember at, uh, at the end of the day the narrative changes and uh, it moves out of these things so quickly and then you get caught in situations where you keep trying to buy these meme tokens and they keep uh, rinsing you out remember at some point this all falls over and we're going back uh, to the regular charts and all these types of things and that's where you're going to find all the action here uh, with me but uh, again it's not I'm not saying I'm not trading uh, these meme coins and I'll show you what I've bought here just in case because I think I've got a little bit of a I think I've got a banger here which I'm going to share with you guys shortly so stick around um, I'm going to cover some Solana things here okay so the next thing for you guys uh, so this is a DeFi investor also a nice little account on Twitter that you can follow um he's talking about three uh, airdrops on the Solana ecosystem basically he's saying this will inject a lot of liquidity into Sol okay so he's expecting a little bit more uh, Solana action and what does that mean for us that means okay well let's look at Sol and let's look at a DEX uh, on Sol. If we're going to get a little bit more liquidity in these areas, let's look at a couple of things. So uh, number one, let's start with Solana. Let's just see where we are. And uh, we know this weekend we touched on 200 once again. I mean, we uh, at around about this 200 level and uh, what uh, what I want to see now is just again some kind of consolidation here and uh, we can't get too upset if we do form some kind of flag here on Sol this is the the weekly chart so this could take a long time to play out but there's nothing wrong with this there's nothing bearish about this type of situation on Sol so those of you holding Sol uh, long-term Sol traders all those types of things nothing too bearish with this current situation if we're getting a pullback it's totally acceptable if you look at this weekly chart and uh, areas of interest that you want to watch 179 that's a big zone for you and uh, 161 that is also another massive uh, support zone for you and this is my current uh, soul situation so these are my two trades uh, that i've got on prime xbt uh, running at the moment and you can see i've still got a, a 40 uh, what's it forty six thousand dollars sole position uh, on prime xbt this thing goes up down up down all day long and uh, it's getting quite frustrating to watch but uh, you know we really want to see it blow that 200 but we need to understand it's uh, it's totally acceptable if we form some kind of flag uh, on the weekly there with soul so that is my current soul situation and then you can see on prime xbt uh, again there is a link in the description for prime xbt guys as well they're also offering you a seven percent sign up bonus uh you know for for, for a seven percent deposit bonus uh for depositing in there and don't forget prime x p silver oil 
all these types of things, Forex, and uh, you can do that all by sending crypto to Prime XPT. So crypto traders, if you only trade crypto and you want to experience something else, you can send your crypto to Prime XPT and they've got a whole separate platform for trading gold and silver and all these things. So keep your eyes on that. But uh, the, as far as my current Prime XPT trades go, here I am. I'm still long soul. Uh, my average entry year is 140. So, you know, hopefully I should be far away enough uh, from any type of liquidation or any type of uh, issue with these guys if they do want to send us lower and um, so i'm holding soul uh, for the time being looking for higher and then i'm currently short on avax at the moment so you can see on the chart here on prime xbt this is my current avax short uh, that i put in place it was just a hedge uh, hedge short in play when we started getting or you know, showing a little bit of weakness uh, the other day so sitting in an avax short at the moment and uh, i'm going to exit that one if we do push a little bit higher around about the 55 to 55.5 55 level i'll probably be starting to exit that uh, avax short but uh, if the market falls over at least we've got some kind of hedge cover here uh, on prime xpt so that's the current situation there and uh, then with regards to, uh, you know, if we're getting liquidity in Solana, we always look at Radium, obviously. And, uh, you know, today I thought, let's look at Orca because uh, Orca has been a little bit of a lagger. And uh, we understand it's a DEX, obviously, uh, on Solana. And uh, no reason why we can't get a little bit of action here uh, on Orca. So what I would suggest to you here, this is the Orca three-day chart. And uh, you can see we are right now, we are drifting into a hot zone here uh, on Orca. We're drifting into a nice solid support region and a little bit lower down we've got backup from the 200 day moving average so this is telling me that this is a huge area for orca this is a massive zone this is a strong strong bounce zone here for us that we're looking at currently with orca so for me i'm looking for a bounce on orca anything uh, from about 3.6 uh, in that region, I'm looking for a move here on Orca. My upside target is going to be around 8.5. But first, we're going to tackle uh, the current trend that you can see is sitting in the way. So we're looking at the, this current trend situation here. But that's about a 30% move uh, on offer here for Orca. And then bigger picture, we can push this thing. And uh, we're looking at about 130%. But remember, our first move is always to our first major resistance zone. And you can see we've got a weekly downtrend in play here. So we're going to look for something uh, in that region there, that weekly trend uh, is what we're going to try and tackle so orca traders here's a potential position for you guys right now and uh, your exit is going to be at close underneath this 200 day moving average so a nice clean uh, clean stop zone here for you of about five to six percent and uh, if the candle closes under the 200 day moving average then we are potentially looking very bearish uh, on orca and we are sending this thing lower and once we do that once the candle closes under this region we will then reassess and start looking uh, at our next areas our next levels uh, and these things where we can get uh, the follow-up bounce but right now for me no reason to be bearish on orca uh, we've got 200 day ma we've got three day levels here coming into play for us as well they also weekly uh, support area so looking uh, for this bounce first move 25 to 30 percent is what we're looking at and then upside about 130 percent but that's full-on bull market again and uh, that's uh, dominance dropping and uh, you know us uh, having fun again uh, okay, let's see who's in the chats. I see you guys are, are calling me now. There's guys talking about me in the chats. Uh, AVAX questions. Uh, I've just covered AVAX. Uh, Lloyd's talking about Larry Pink. Guys, Larry Pink is, uh, it's the Larry Pink. I, I, I mean, Larry Fink. Um, you know, in this house, it's called Larry Pink. So uh, that's how it is. It's, uh, you know, Larry Pink is where it's at for me. Um, let's see. I know, I know dupes like that one too. Uh, so many mean guys mean guys yeah i'm just going through all these chats yeah guys let's let's get back to business guys let's trade our traditional coin let's do what we love and uh you know what we love 618s trends horizontals all these fun things wow uh this chat guys i'm scrolling through this chat i can't get to the bottom of it okay here we go here's some normal people victor asking uh for link and uh, uh see ga is asking for casper that's better gus is asking for fdm there's my people um that is what we want to hear okay let's uh let's look at this gto situation so uh top six uh, monthly watch list from layer g official and uh, he's got an interesting comment here he's got two comments one of them is Gito and the other one is Sui so I thought I'm going to take a look at both of these for you guys and uh, Gito so he's saying it's among the new soul eco projects okay we understand that and uh, he's basically saying Gito is completely undervalued and I wonder today if uh, this tweet had anything to do with this pump uh, on this Gito price at the moment so those of you interested in Gito what you want to do is try and identify now a bullish entry 
for yourself. So what have we seen? We've had a nice little break. And, uh, you know, when we get a nice break like that, things turn bullish and we understand there's potentially bullish momentum in these tokens. But what do we do with it? How do we secure nice little areas of interest, nice little entry zones uh, and things like that? Well, we need to look for bullish pullbacks. We want to buy with confidence on bullish areas when we get a nice break. And you can see what's happened with Gito. We had a massive break here uh, of this horizontal and uh, it's now completely overbought, I would say, in my opinion. It looks like we need to just come back a little bit. So hot zones that you want to watch, hot zones you want to pay attention to for Gito. This is area number one, 3.85. And uh, area number two, I've got another hot zone for you, 3.43. Now, both of these can be areas of interest. Both of these can be great uh, potential long zones. Let's see how deep they want to take us with BTC. Let's see how BTC wants to bleed us out. If we get some kind of capitulation, we might be trying to grab Gito uh, much lower down at about 3.45. But right now, for me, the most bullish situation I can see is going to be a move into 3.85 for me on Gito. That is long zone number one. That is bull zone number one. And you can see why. Um, now that I've marked this up for you, you can see why it makes sense. We've got it moving into a 382 fib. We've got to move it in, into uh, some horizontals here for you guys as well. So it looks like a nice juicy uh, little bounce area here for Gito. And uh, remember the power of a 382 fib when we are bullish and something is breaking and it's coming back for that retest. That 382 time and time again uh, comes to the party. So keep your eyes on that. Two big areas here uh, for Gito, 3.86, 3.85, and then the big dog here, uh, 3.44. So both of them are great areas uh, for Gito traders. Fabio is looking for Elgo. Uh, let's see, guys. If, if I've got a couple of minutes here, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a couple of these charts for you. Let me just do. Let me let me smash the Sui and stick around because I'm gonna show you that meme coin uh, that I've bought at the moment. And uh, right now, here's Sui. So here's an update on Sui. And uh, just to regarding this tweet, we can see uh, Sui's got its first global conference, Sui Base Camp, scheduled for April 10th to 11th. What generally happens at these things, we often get pumpage running into these type of conferences. And maybe, you know, if, if we get lucky, we get one or two massive announcements at these things and people generally turn bullish. And you could see uh, on Banter Bubbles today that Sui was one of the better performers considering how messy this market was. Here's Sui, 3% uh, up in basically a sea of red. So, you know, there is some attention here with Sui at the moment. And uh, for those of you that were watching me last week, well, uh, we got our Sui trade. This was our initial trade that we took uh, in that entry zone and uh, we smashed through our TP1. This was our TP1 zone uh, that we took out. And what happened now this weekend? Well, through the bleed out, uh, you know, while we were all having a relaxing weekend, uh, we had Sui come back here and bounce at a zero at, at the 618 Fib for us. So 618 Fib reaction uh, here for Sui. And uh, I'm currently still long Sui. So I have no intention uh, of exiting my Sui position. I'm long from this entry box at the, at this region. And with the Sui conference coming up, for me, unless there's a com complete capitulation here in the market, uh, I'm going to sweat this one out and let it drift back into my entry box. If it needs to, uh, if it needs to drift back, it must drift back into the entry zone. And uh, I'm going to be adding to that position with this conference in mind. Okay, if we're going to be bullish leading into conferences as soon uh, as this current dumpage is over, uh, we're going to be looking for longs again on these altcoins. And remember, the, the pain only lasts a few days and then we always get some kind of rally we get some kind of run so if, if we are in our second day here of pain and suffering uh, on these altcoins remember it's always you know just around the corner whenever you want to capitulate right at the end there when you're hating crypto that's generally uh, going to be your sign of a potential reversal coming so uh, i'll obviously be updating everybody in sniper club as well uh, as to my current thoughts but uh, for me sui this trade is in play here Anything back into this entry box, I'm looking for longs again. And uh, we are still trying to chase this uh, 2.45 level for us. So markers that you want to watch, support zones, 1.83, keep your eyes on that. And then anywhere in this entry box, which was anything from 1.76 down to about 1.69. For me, that was a nice juicy area uh, for Sui traders and no reason why we can't grab that zone again if we do get offered. Uh, that little area. Okay, let's take some uh, let's take some requests from you guys in the chats, and uh, I'm going to start with FTM, and uh, I've got Filecoin, and I've got Elgo. Okay, so guys, drop a couple more uh, in the chats if you want. I'm going to try and cover uh, what I can for you at the moment. Let's see how we are doing with FTM currently. 
Okay, we're losing some levels here with FTM. Okay, uh, let's see. So let's just uh, unpack the current FTM story. What did they give us? They gave us a double top. Okay, so the signs were there. When we got that rejection, uh, the signs were there. I did note on Sniper Club, I said, yeah, guys, we got a double top. We're looking uh, a little bit bearish. What did we get? Uh, what was our next play? So next play, we got a trend reaction and a 3A2. Okay, so that looks good. We got a nice little bounce there, but we didn't get follow through. Then we were looking for the reaction again. And what did they give us? They gave us the bounce again or for 3a2 remember the power of a 3a2 the power of these fibs they give us these reactions they give us uh, these areas that we're looking at and uh, they react on these zones again they can't they can't tell us how high they're going to send these things but what we can tell you uh, for certainty is that we get reactions in these strong reaction zones and that's why we play them uh, so successfully so uh, here we are now so now we are bleeding down so what did we get in the bigger picture we got a loss of trade we got a retest we got the rejection and now we are heading down so phantom traders uh if i have to look at this you know from a zoomed out perspective to me currently until things change we are looking at a potential move here to 0 0.78 okay so that is a potential area now of interest for me for phantom so if things are going to melt down here btc is going to send us lower and uh, 0 0.78 for me looks like or is starting to look like an area of interest here and you look at the type of backup uh, that we have we've got this 50 day moving average creeping up uh, into this region as well so that could be a sign for us that we are going to potentially get a little bit more downside on phantom when do we turn bullish how does it change well number one you can see what's going on here phantom has now lost key horizontal support as well so it's not a it's not a great look it's not the best vibe you've ever seen yeah look here we've lost this horizontal support so what what does that tell us if we do get a push up we need to just be careful that we don't get that rejection and then they send us uh, a little bit lower to that area when do we turn bullish we turn bullish if we reclaim this 3a2 region and then we start pushing on from there so you want to make sure that you can reclaim uh, 0 0.94 as support if you can reclaim 0 0.94 as support then we can start saying we are turning a little bit more bullish uh, on phantom but until that i would say downtrend now for phantom is in play and uh, we got to treat it as such so uh, put in your downtrends and this is going to be applicable to a lot of your altcoins that you are watching uh, at the moment so you can do the same thing you, you're going to see they're going to have a similar look to them and uh, when do you turn bullish you turn bullish when they start breaking trends okay so the look is like that we're going to break that trend we want to hold that support at 0 0.94 and then we can turn bullish again on phantom if that doesn't happen i would say we're looking for longs lower down in fact i'm going to set my alarm right now uh, 0 0.78 let's just ping an alarm in here Okay, not a good look for altcoins. It's going to hurt. It's going to sweat. We're going to feel the burn. Okay, but 0 0.78 is where it's at for me for Phantom. And again, we turn bullish. We break the trend. We turn bullish. Then we say, okay, cool. Lower levels are off now. We've broken a trend. Now we're going to ride this trend and we're going to push this thing uh, higher. So that is my current plan for Phantom. Let's take a look at Algo. Okay, Olgo's pushing into what looks like a nice little juicy zone. Let's uh, let's take a look here. We got the 50-day MA coming up. Let's see what uh, what type of tie-in we have here. So the first thing you want to do is identify big support areas. Ooh. Okay, so that looks quite nice actually, uh, as far as I'm concerned here. Olgo 618. What have we got? We got a 618 in play. We've got horizontals in play. Okay, looks like a nice little reaction zone here for us for Olgo. Let's bang out our trend. Okay, look at that. Um, okay, so there, there's a couple of things in play here. Number one, uh, if we do get a bounce, okay, this looks quite juicy actually. Um, if we do get a bounce here, what do we do? We need to understand where's our resistance zone? Where, where do we react? Okay, so if we get a bounce, we can't get excited until we start breaking through this region because we could very easily see that type of setup here on Elgo. So this is the absolute lows uh, of, uh, of this current move. If we do get a bounce here, we're looking for a push higher. Look out. For this trend okay when we break this trend we can turn super bullish again but this is a reaction zone right here uh, for algo let's take a look at btc as well let's just make sure btc is sitting on a decent level okay because this could be a little reaction play here for you guys right now a uh, small little move initially when it gets to trend then we can reassess uh, where we are let's just take a look at btc 
Okay, so BTC is floating mid-level. Okay, so that is why, you know, I'm not super comfortable. If BTC was reacting right now uh, at this 382, okay, so if BTC was sitting on this 382 right now, I would say, okay, cool, we've got Olgo tied into a 618, BTC is on a major fib, and, uh, you know, let's send this thing. But right now, BTC looks like it still wants to just sweat a little bit lower uh, onto the 67.5. Let's just look at our dominance. Okay, so dominance is still looking bullish on the one hour. You can see what's going on here. Dominance on the one hour. We always pay attention to this when we do uh, have some kind of bleed out. And uh, what's going on? We've got the 50-day moving average acting as support for dominance. And uh, we have now broken this horizontal. So dominance, not a good look at the moment for BTC. Uh, let's, uh, okay, so exercise caution here. Okay, what do we have? We've got Algo on a 618. We've got Algo with horizontal and we've got Algo with a 50-day MA pushing up a little bit below it. What I don't like, BTC still needs to come lower for me. Okay, so I want to see BTC settle uh, in the 67.5 down to about 66.9. When we're in that region, then we can start getting a little bit more conviction uh, with some of these altcoins. I just want to see uh, that push lower. But uh, as far as support is concerned, you can you can look for a scalp here. For me, I'm already trying this Manta scalp. Let's see how we're going. Um, I'm not going to add any scalps to my current situations. I'm going to try this Manta. Um, I'll go. 618 horizontal 50 day ma that's helping you at the moment let's pull back let's take a look at uh, bigger picture let's see what type of trends we have in play here okay and then this also paints a little picture for you okay so now it gives you your next region so as you saw in the beginning of the show when we were looking at uh, uh we were looking at manta and optimism and arbitrum we need to understand where's our next level what's our next area if we do lose current support zones that we are on always identify your next reaction zone and uh, more than likely it's going to be the 786 and trend coming into play a little bit lower down so this is your zone number two okay for algo that is your area number two and uh, let's take a look here. It's going to look something along those lines. You're going to have probably about a 2% stop. And uh, you're going to look for a move like that. And uh, if you lose that rising trend, then we start looking deeper and darker again. But uh, right now, we identify reaction zones, points of interest. Where, we, where can we get a move? And uh, you can see right now, it's reacting on the 618 because it's a reaction zone. Okay. The next one for us, 786 and trend. That's a big area for us, uh, for Olgo. 0 0.235 okay 0 0.235 is your next one so if you don't get that reaction here right here 0 0.247 your next reaction zone 0 0.235 that sort of area and uh, for me yeah both of these look like areas where we could get nice little moves uh, for algo but again short-term moves until we start breaking trends uh, and things like that so just pay attention to your your resistance higher up every time Okay, let's go. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else we got. Uh, fetch. That's a good one. Thank you. Um, I like this fetch. Let's uh, let's see where we are. Okay, and then I'm going to show you. I'm going to tell you about this meme coin that I've bought. Um, okay, fetch. Four hour. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, first thing we want to do, we want to look for some supports. What do we have in play here? Okay, there we got a nice little trend retest. Let's pull some fibs. 618. Okay, I've pulled the fibs from this low. Okay, I, I pulled it from this double bottom here, this low over there. For me, that looked interesting. And uh, what I've got, I've got a 618, I've got trend, I've got horizontals. So for me, there's a potential there's a potential move coming here for fetch a little bit lower down. So you're pretty close, uh, 2.8. So I would say you can look for a scalp, you can look for a move uh, in this region. If you get BTC tying in to that nice juicy support on trend, this might give you that opportunity uh, to jump into fetch. So you're looking at something along these lines. So you're looking for this final little push into the zone trend 618 horizontal that's a little area there of interest for you for fetch traders 2.8 and uh, your next reaction zone if that area fails you've got to understand where your next zone is where's your next potential bounce uh, what are you looking at and your next level after that is going to be 2.61 so that's what you're watching 2.8 
2.61. Both of them are interesting zones uh, where you could get some kind of reaction for fetch. And ideally, you want to tie it in when BTC is tucked in to a nice little support region. So pay attention now. Watch this bounce, okay? Let's see. If BTC reclaims that horizontal, then we can start really getting excited about things. But uh, right now, BTC is pushing up into a resistance band. Okay, so let's pay attention to this region at the moment. And uh, if we get a rejection, it will be a rejection at this horizontal. You can see these horizontals here. And we could get something along these lines, which is going to be a repeat of this pattern uh, that we saw earlier, uh, earlier today. So watch out for something along those lines and uh, watch out for that support. Okay, uh, this, uh, okay, low cap, small cap, okay, meme coin, Bitcoin on Sol. Okay, it's actually called don't sell your fucking Bitcoin. Okay. So it's basically Michael Saylor is, uh, you know, their man. And uh, I know the team behind this. This is going to be a rug free uh, situation. Uh, it's a trustworthy team. Right now, the market cap is sitting at 2 million. I've started DCAing into this project. I'm in there. I'm in this for the long haul uh, on this play. We think this thing can actually go, uh, you know, quite a bit bigger than uh, the current situation, the 2 million. We're looking for 10 to 20 minimum uh, market cap on this thing. So I'll continue to tell you my plans uh, on this current meme coin, but I'm DCAing in slowly uh, into this uh, into this meme coin. I think it's going to have some legs and, uh, you know, let's watch it play out. We'll update in a week or two. And uh, for me, anything around 1 million, 1.5 million market cap, those type of levels uh, is where I'm looking to DCA and we're looking at a couple of bigger things here uh, on this token. And there you have it. That's my current meme plane. And then I've got an update for you guys this week. And, uh, you know, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you my full uh, my full meme degen play that I am currently involved in this week. So make sure you tune in to my show. Make sure you are subscribed. Banter Plus, like and subscribe, hit the bell, all those types of things. I'm going to give you my meme planes because I can see you guys are hungry for it. So I'll give you my current situation on those as well during the week. And uh, we're going to do a full update. So tomorrow, uh, interested to see what the market is going to give us in the next, say, 12 to 24 hours. And uh, yeah, we'll give you a full update on all the layer ones, all the regulars uh, that we need to do as well this week. So good luck out there. And uh, hope you guys had a great Easter. And, uh, you know, back to business now uh, this week. And uh, the markets must play ball. They must play ball for us. Have a good evening. See you guys. Thank you.